Good evening, my sleepy nights. Tonight, we venture to the Scottish Highlands where ancient druid magic stirs within a young man, compelling him to master its power, protect his people, and change the course of history. Ewan McLeod crouched amongst the heather, peering between branches at the dark stones jutting out from the hillside ahead. The ancient crypt of Clan McLeod, resting place of his forefathers. He shivered, though not from cold. Since boyhood, he had felt an odd tingling whenever he neared the crypt. Like static in the air before a storm. His father dismissed such foolish fancies, demanding he focus on warrior training. But at 17, Yoon trusted his instincts more than his father's scorn. Something within this hallowed tomb called to him tonight beneath the full moon's glow. Creeping forward, Yoon translated the worn inscription over the entranceway. Here lie the honoured dead of Clan McLeod. A heavy stone door grated open reluctantly, stirred by unseen hand, his own. Eerie azure light spilled out, cast by phosphorant mosses coating the walls. He whispered apologies to his slumbering ancestors as he descended the crumbling steps. His heart pounded in his ears. The light illuminated a dozen granite sarcophagi bearing knights in repose, claymores clasped to chests. At the chamber's end stood the largest tomb encasing the clan's founder. Ewan felt his presence instantly. A towering warrior with eyes like steel. Somehow, the ancient leader yet watched over his descendants from beyond death. Kneeling before the founder's tomb, Ewan bowed his head. Great McLeod, I am Ewan, your last son. I feel your spirits pull, though I know not why. What do you seek of me? No words came. But a vision flashed in Ewan's mind. A secret chamber concealed behind the founder's image. Heart racing, Ewan examined the sarcophagus, finding a thin crack in the stone where it met the wall. He traced along it until his fingers dipped into a small opening. Pressing both palms flat, he pushed with all his might. With a grinding of stone on stone, the massive tomb slid sideways, just far enough to reveal a dark void. Ewan peered within, 
seeing a small wooden chest encrusted with ornate carvings and symbols. Druid ruins. Throwing caution aside, he reached in and grasped it, letting the weighty box rest in his hands. The carving seemed to writhe in the blue light. Ravens, dragons, warriors entwined in wooden battle. Mesmerized, he lifted the lid. Inside, on tattered velvet, lay a medallion shaped like a rayed sun, bronze chain draped below. The amulet's amber center pulsed softly as he lifted it. Washes of ruby, emerald and sapphire reflected within. This was the source of power he had sensed. Ewan clutched the warm metal tightly, feeling energy surge down his arm like lightning. Startled, he almost dropped it, but some instinct told him not to let go. Tentatively, he slipped the chain around his neck. The amber flashed brightly, warming against his heart. His hands tingled strangely, and glancing down, he saw arcs of blue light dancing between his fingertips. The energy coursing through him grew hotter, almost painful, but felt oddly thrilling. Then, he heard urgent hoofbeats outside, followed by panicked voices at the crypt's entrance. McCloyd raiders returned from the south. One man was badly injured. Ewan quickly hid the amulet beneath his tunic and hurried outside. His father's lieutenant, Malcolm, lay bleeding with a wicked sword slash across his torso. The other men staunched the wound best they could. But Malcolm's face had already gone deathly pale beneath his tartan. Ewan rushed forward without thinking, drawing Malcolm's head onto his lap. He pressed one glowing hand over the wound and the other onto Malcolm's favoured brow. Words unknown spilled from Ewan's lips in a strange tongue. Malcolm's eyes flew open, seeing not Ewan, but some mystic vision. His body jerked violently, then fell still, panting. Ewan removed his hands. Malcolm's skin was whole again. The gruesome slash, now a faint scar. The Scottish clansmen staggered back in shock and awe. The lieutenant set up slowly dumbfounded at the impossibility of his own survival. He whispered, The old magic returned to Clan Macleod. Then Malcolm's eyes rolled back and he slumped down unconscious. 
startled whispers broke out amongst the men. Ewan rose shakily to his feet. The amber amulet still burned over his heart, but the frantic energy had left him. He knew only that his hands had healed a dire wound through some ancient magic. His father appeared at the crypt's entrance, face thunderous. He roughly grabbed you in shoulder with one mighty arm. Inside. Now, he bellowed, dragging his son back down the stone steps. Fergus rubbed his temples wearily after hours of poring over crumbling maps and artifacts. As Master Druid, he alone knew the entirety of people's history and mystical traditions. But never had he encountered a puzzle like the one before him now. Reports had reached him from across the highlands of an ancient power awakening in the north. The sacred wells and stone circles thrummed with energy not felt in centuries. The last flicker of old magic before fading forever or the first spark of some new era. He had come seeking answers. Gazing outside his hillside rectory, he watched the setting sun paint crimson across the sky. A storm was brewing in the east. He tasted its metallic tang on the wind. Change brewed there too, forces stirring that he could not yet see. He sighed and added more peat to the fire and steeped his fingers before the embers, letting his mind expand outward seeking clues. A flash of insight struck him like lightning. Fergus bolted up from his chair. There, in the northernmost highlands, the spiritual nexus of Clan Macleod, the ageless power had awakened there. And at its heart stood the scared young soul last of a sacred bloodline, needing guidance. The vision erupted in Fergus's mind as clearly as if shown by the old gods themselves. Heart pounding, he moved swiftly around the room, gathering his staff, robe, and other tools needed for the journey. At last, he took down the leather satchel holding his most precious possessions. Ancient relics handed down by the druids before him. Slinging this over his back, Fergus departed into the growing storm. His people's last hope lay with what he would find at journey's end. Ewan sat cross-legged on his bed, turning the druid amulet over in his hands. He had not spoken since his father, white-faced with rage, flung him in here hours ago. 
the man's reaction confused Ewan. Shouldn't the return of the clan's ancient magic be welcomed? A heavy knock broke the tense silence, followed by Malcolm's muffled voice. I must speak with you. Reluctantly, Ewan opened the door to face the imposing lieutenant. Malcolm studied the youth before him, still a gangly boy in many ways, though now touched by forces unseen. Your father forbid me to approach you, Malcolm said gruffly. But I owe you my life, blood. You've been blessed by the old magic. And that... That is not to be feared. Ewan remained weary, but sensed he could trust the seasoned warrior. I don't seek power, he said quietly, only understanding. But the magic answers when I call it, as if it flows in my blood. Malcolm smiled. Aye, it does. For the sacred gift was long ago bestowed upon Clan Macleod by the ancient druids. To guard and guide in times of need. But many generations have passed since it last awoke. That it stirs in you now is a sign of the fates themselves have intervened. Ewan listened in awe as Malcolm related the heroic legends of their druid ancestors. Fear and doubt receded from Ewan's heart, replaced by stunned purpose. Could he be the next guardian of this gift. Far below the castle, Fergus approached across the moonlit glen. The journey had depleted much of his strength, but he forced himself the last few miles when the towering stronghold emerged from the mists. Two guards blocked his path at the gate, leery of strangers, but Fergus uttered a single druid word, and the men stood aside, eyes glazed. Some magics lingered still. Into the courtyard he hobbled, relying now on his staff. A grizzled warrior approached and knelt before Fergus. Ancient one, I am Malcolm. We have awaited your coming. Fergus nodded. This man knew in his bones what stirred here. Take me to the awakened one, Fergus instructed. Malcolm led him inside without hesitation. Ewan looked up, startled, as his bedchamber door opened again. He froze at the sight of the elderly robed man leaning on a knotted staff. Intense eyes peered from beneath the hood shadowing his bearded face. Power lay coiled in the man's sparse frame, like a viper poised to strike. Well met, last son of the druids. Fergus's voice was strangely soothing. I am Fergus, 
born of the Clan Macleod in elder days, now hidden guardian of its mystical legacy. Ewan found his tongue at last. I am Ewan, but how do you know me? Fergus smiled. I have watched over our bloodline's gift through dreams and visions, keeping it safe until the day awakening came. That day is now. The amulet you discovered is bound to your spirit. Its magic lives through you. Ewan could only nod, words failing him. Fergus drew a bronze disc from his robes, a druid seal marking him as master over all his order. I have sought you out to offer training. You possess raw power, but lack the knowledge to wield it safely. Will you accept me as your mentor? Ewan could not refuse. He bowed his head before Fergus, overcome with purpose. For in his heart, he embraced the power stirring within him the destiny it foretold. Many weeks passed as Ewan devoted himself fully to Fergus's tutelage. His days filled with mental and physical trials, designed to unlock his abilities and channel their force. Most difficult was mastering control. Magic left unchecked could prove dangerous, even lethal. They often trained outside the castle walls beyond prying eyes. People's curiosity soon shifted to suspicion, then fear of the druid witchcraft. Only his father's grudging tolerance protected him from persecution. Through it all, Ewan persevered, driven to see his training through to the end. He learned to move objects with his mind, commanding the very air to do his bidding. From Fergus he gained knowledge of herbs, and healing elixirs, how to mend wounded flesh and bone. This knowledge demanded the most care and wisdom. The line between cure and harm was very thin. In nature, Ewan found his greatest affinity. He could communicate with all beasts and growing things, feel their life force thrumming in harmony with his own. And this felt entirely right and natural, as if he conversed with long lost friends. A profound oneness underlay it all. Most wondrous were the elemental forces Ewan learned to summon. Gusts of wind, walls of flame, tremors in the earth itself. But the gifts always came at a price. Each new well of power he tapped left him drained once the magic receded and the forces never fully bent to his will. 
They answered his call in their own tongues, wild and untamed. To employ them was to dance with lightning, dangerous and exhilarating all at once. Throughout, Ewan sensed Fergus observing not just his external feats, but the evolution of his inner soul. Wisdom and empathy were the true fruits of mastering magic. Powers manifest differently in each body and mind, Fergus told him. But their purpose remains the same, to illuminate that which lies within, both light and shadow. This we must know and accept to wield them justly. The full moon loomed large as Ewan sat deep in meditation. Fergus had gone to gather mistletoe for obscure purposes. Ewan felt himself connecting to the web of life around him, energy flowing freely until a disruption. His eyes snapped open, an intrusion nearby, but not Fergus. Ewan raced up to the ramparts, peering out. A lone rider approached from the east, darting between trees. English. Ewan focused every ounce of power on the interloper, raising vines from the loam to ensnare him. But the spy cut them down with his blade and galloped off. Dark tidings were coming. Ewan waited anxiously for Fergus. This was no drill. He could not hope to face the enemy alone. At last the druid returned, his grim face confirming Ewan's fears. The solstice comes in a fortnight. Our ancient rituals show dark, dark portents aligned in its stars. War is near. We must prepare. Ewan's heart sank even as his resolve deepened. Fergus motioned for him to follow to the library tower. There, the druid moved aside a dusty tapestry, revealing a hidden cache bearing the chest of Macleod. From within, he drew out the prize sword, a scroll of oiled leather bound by a black iron lock. Fergus produced an ornate key and opened the lock with care. This knowledge was entrusted to me long ago by the arch druids, before the old ways faded. Come, we have much work ahead and very little time. The two cloistered themselves in the tower, deciphering the arcane secrets contained in the unfurled scroll. A detailed ritual for tapping into primordial forces of nature itself. But the warnings of potential devastation were dire. 
to employ such power as to lose a tempest, Fergus said gravely. Once summoned, it cannot easily be dispelled or controlled, even by a true druid master. He gripped Ewan's shoulder firmly. Consider carefully, for the deed once done may unleash a doom on us all. Ewan poured late into the night. At last conviction filled him. I will pay any price if it defends the clan. We are too few against the English might. Lead me through the ritual. Fergus searched Ewan's face and saw the resolve burning within. Slowly he nodded. So be it. We begin at first light. In the days remaining they prepared, gathering instruments, sacred herbs and oils. Ewan practiced the incantations until they echoed through his sleep. The solstice eve arrived, the clan restless but unaware of what the next day would bring. That night, Ewan slipped down the crypt, seeking a quiet vigil with his ancestors. He froze and muttered voices from within. Creeping down the steps, he saw a robed figure kneeling before the founder's tomb. Thomas, the blacksmith's son. The druid amulet dangled from his hands as he rifled through the chest's relics. Rage boiled up in Ewan. He summoned roots from the earthen floor to snare Thomas in their vice-like grip. Thief, he thundered. You shall pay for defiling this sacred place. Thomas wailed for mercy as Ewan ripped the amulet from his hands. Disgusted, Ewan dragged the traitor up into moonlight and forced the whole tale from him under threat of a worse fate. Thomas had seen the amulet around Ewan's neck and watched them prepare the solstice ritual. He had planned to steal the relic and take it to the English in hopes of a reward for such a prize. Ewan bound Thomas to a tree outside for the clan to judge in the morning. But, gazing down at the amulet now lying so innocently in his palm, Ewan felt only remorse at his own hot temper. Fergus was right. Magic revealed the heart, both its light and darkness. Ewan still had much to learn. Sighing, he placed the amulet back in the chest and sealed it safely once more. Dawn broke cold and ominous. Storm clouds gathered as Ewan and Fergus made their way northeast to an ancient stone circle atop of a wooded hill. This sacred site stood precisely between the Macleod Keep and the English forces massed to the south. Between life and death, here, they would make their stand. As Ewan assembled the ritual tools, Thomas's betrayal waited upon him. 
how many more mistrusted his gifts. There was no turning back now. He could only pray their judgement of his actions proved wiser in hindsight. Fergus nodded reassuringly. The time had come. Ewan knelt in the centre of the stone circle. Amulet pressed to his heart. He lit bundles of herbs and wafted the smoke around him in a cleansing ritual. Fergus stood watch at the perimeter. The air cracked with energy beyond the brewing storm. Ewan bowed his head and began chanting. Voice growing louder with each repetition until he roared the mystic words to the heavens. Winds arise and thunder darken. Earth rise up and fire strike. The clouds burst forth, unleashing frigid sleet upon the hilltop. The wind screamed through the stones, flinging icy daggers. Ewan screamed too, as the forces collided within him. His hands gouged the soil, seeking purchase while the elements raged. Powers of earth heed me, spirits of air and water, answer my call, protect us. The heavens split open with a deafening crack. Ewan's eyes glowed white hot as he channeled the tempest's fury outwards shaping currents of wind and lightning to strike along the enemy's front line. A wall of earth erupted before them, soil and stone melding into a rampart against invasion. The winds turned to gale force, fanning brush fires behind the barricade into an inferno. All the power Ewan possessed, all the magic of his druid blood and training poured forth to wield nature's wrath against his foes. The elements raged and Ewan raged with them, primal ecstasy and fury mingling as he called down heaven's justice. Wave after wave, he drove forth until the hostile force wavered, broke apart, and finally retreated in disarray, man and horse fleeing before the unearthly onslaught. As the last stragglers disappeared into the forest, Ewan finally collapsed, spent utterly. The winds calmed and clouds lightened as nature's convulsion subsided along with its conduit. Fergus rushed to the young druid's side. Ewan was weakened greatly, but the peaceful rhythms of life still pulsed steadily within him. It is over, lad. We have driven them back. Fergus's voice was weary but full of awe. None before have accomplished what you have this day. Your mastery is complete. Ewan managed a weak smile. Let us pray it need never be done again. With Fergus's help, he slowly rose to his feet. 
limbs laden but soul lightened. They made their way down from the scorched hilltop in contemplative silence. Word spread swiftly across the highlands of the great rout of the English by storms of unnatural fury. Exulation resounded through Clan Macleod at their unlikely deliverance. Prayers of thanks echoed from glen to glen for the druid magic's return. Ewan himself remained silent, the victory a bittersweet burden upon his heart. Many had viewed his reawakened power as a threat, until proven otherwise through bloodshed. Rejection wounded him still. Upon arriving home, a lone rider galloped up to meet Ewan, his father. The chief dismounted and clasped his son's shoulder firmly. I was wrong to doubt you, lad. Forgive my foolish pride. You... You have saved us all through your gift. The clan owes you and Fergus a great debt. Ewan saw his father's sincerity and nodded, emotion flooding his heart. We faced the storm together and prevailed. That alone matters. Father and son embraced as warriors and kin. That night, a celebration filled the keep with light, music, and revelry. Ewan's power was hailed with cheers and songs praising his bravery. Fergus pronounced him a true druid. Ewan accepted their accolades graciously, but took no joy in them. He knew some darkness yet lingered in his heart, and that power could not dispel. The need for others' approval. His work of mastery had only begun, but for now, he allowed himself to share in the clan's joy. The future could wait for one night. In the days after, Ewan found Fergus often gazing thoughtfully at the distant mountains now visible with the English gone. He sensed the elder druid's burdens lifting away and passing to him. Youthful vigour would now guide the clan forward. Will you leave us, Fergus? He asked one twilight. The druid smiled. My task here was to keep the old ways alive until your coming. That work is done. He clasped Ewan's shoulder with pride. I shall return to the summer lands, but my spirit remains with you, always. When Ewan retired that night, raven feathers adorned his doorway, Fergus's final blessing, and in the morning, the druid had vanished. Walking staff left behind. 
you and no Fergus wish to depart in silence. He looked over at the glen once graced by the elder's presence. May your journey ahead be blessed as the path behind. I shall walk in your footsteps. From that day on, you and on the emerald robes befitting his station. The people looked to him for guidance and healing, though the great powers lay dormant. Only once had their light been called upon. Ewan prayed that the land would remain peaceful, and no such dire need ever rise again. If it did, he would answer its call once more. For the Druid's legacy lived on through his blood, and his clan yet thrived. That alone gave him hope for the future.